welcome back. Today I am two weeks post Achilles tendon rupture and I'm still non-weight bearing on this leg. Hopefully you've been watching some of my other videos demonstrating some of the physio yoga practice practices that I've been doing and the uh, manipulation of stairs with crutches. I gave you uh, some bits of advice there. So today what I would like to share with you are some more tips and pieces of advice for crutch use and crutch walking. A lot of people uh, do tend to get neck pain and back pain or shoulder pain, wrists, um, and even chafing underneath uh, the armpits. So what I would like to share with you are some different techniques or or different ways, or the proper ways, that we should be engaging and activating uh, the upper extremity muscles, the trunk muscles, and then also what to do with this um, affected leg, where to place it. So in order to use your crutches safely and effectively, uh, we need to make sure they are sized appropriately for your height. So to, to start, you want the, the arm pad to be just not, you don't want it to be right underneath the armpit. You want maybe two or three fingers to be able to fit um, in there. What, what we don't want is, is compression. So, you know, you may see people kind of hanging, you know, on the crutches like that. We, we don't want that at all. That can compress a lot of nerve structures that are, that are under the armpit. So don't do that. Uh, and then the arm, the uh, hand grip, should be, if you're standing up nice and tall, just with your arm down by your side, the, the handle grip should be about in line with your wrist. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how to incorporate the entire uh, upper quadrant. So how we integrate the entire shoulder girdle, uh, the elbow and uh, the wrist. In. So we'll start with the shoulder girdle. So what people tend to do when they take the step and bear weight in the crutches is they kind of come forward. So you can see how my, my weight's going into my hands, but the shoulder blades are just kind of, they're not really doing anything. There's no action around the shoulder blades. There's no scapular stability. What we, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is actually engage the muscles around the shoulder blades, so the periscapular muscles. And we want to lift, lift. And a side view to help demonstrate a little further. Uh, without the nice scapular stabilization, you come, you come forward and kind of sink. So that's how not to use the crutch. You can see what that does to the neck and shoulders causing a lot of uh, strain on the joints. So what we want is some nice, great scapular stabilization, lifting up, core is engaged, my neck just sort of floats. And then the triceps, we'll talk about the elbow now. We don't wanna, we don't wanna hyperextend and lock the elbow. So you have a nice soft, sort of soft elbow and then as you put pressure on the crutches, or as you put weight onto the crutches, there is a bit of a tricep extension, or a lot of a tricep extension. You feel those triceps activating. The, again, the shoulder blades, the, the scapulae are depressing downwards and a little bit of protraction. So you have lower fiber traps working. You have some serratus anterior activation. And another motion that's important is um, some adduction of the, of the arm, which just means basically squeezing in a little bit. So you, you take your arms and you just kind of gently squeeze those arm pads, not hard, but just sort of gently squeeze them into the side body. So all of this together, I'm gonna to talk about the wrist in a bit too, but all of these together can help improve balance, can improve mechanical efficiency of uh, your muscles and reduce joint um, compression and pain and can also help to prevent chafing. Because if you think about it, what, it, what is chafing? I mean, it's just, it's, it's from friction. 
right? So if you're just sort of doing this kind of motion, these, these arm pads are going to be moving up and down. So we really, really want to keep them as stable as we can. So when we put those crutch tips down, a little bit of a squeeze, arms into body, so that you feel the crutch pads into the trunk. Weight goes into those crutch tips as the triceps and the shoulder blade, the shoulder girdle, sort of lift up and hold you. You, just, you really have to just practice it and feel nice and strong, not sinking. And the last part of the upper extremity chain is the wrist. So you just want to make sure that it is uh, in a closed pack joint position, which is a little bit of extension and radial deviation. Um, it, for me, it's, it's quite natural. Um, just to kind of keep, you know, what you really want to do is just prevent the wrists from flopping, you know, down and in that way. And, you know, if you take care of the rest of the chain, so, you know, the, the shoulder blades and the triceps and everything strong, you know, the, the wrist should, should kind of follow suit. We're going to talk about now what the uh, leg does when we crutch walk. It depends sometimes on whether you're weight bearing or non weight bearing. Um, but let's, let's just sort of talk in general where this leg should go. So uh, the crutch tips will be, you'll place them just in front of the leg, about a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. And you want to feel, you know, not too far forward or, um, you know, basically you just want to make sure you feel balanced. So whatever's right for you, but just a little bit in front. The, the affected leg goes with the crutch, it always stays with the crutch and then you can bring your other foot in front. So the foot and the crutch tips together. You can either do a step two pattern, just stepping in line, or you could do something a bit more, um, bit more advanced, and if you feel comfortable, it's more how we walk, which is the step through. So foot and crutch, and then coming through. And you notice how my, my foot, again, just stays with, with the crutches. So foot and crutch, and through foot with crutch and through. So whether or not you're, you're weight bearing, um, you know, the leg can kind of do the same thing, the same pattern. The only thing is if you are non weight bearing like I am, um, sometimes if you, if you sort of do this motion of simulating gait forward and back, uh, you may have a tendency to want to put your foot down. So just depending on what you know, your physio or your surgeon has, you know, if they've given you specific instructions, please go with what they say. Uh, but, you know, you might feel more comfortable if you're non-weight bearing, just to keep that leg up and out of the way. Uh, but you don't want to do this, you know, too long uh, for a prolonged period because you, you know, for, for me anyway, my, my hamstring just is getting so sore and tired. Plus, it's just not a normal gait pattern. So what I what I do encourage you to do is if you can if you can find this sort of simulated walking motion that that would be the best. Um, but if you do want to get it up and out of the way, if you're non weight bearing, and especially if you kind of want to go a bit faster, uh, you can keep it up. Now you may notice me hobbling around. Sometimes I have it in front, and I just sort of play with that a bit because if I've got it back like this. Um, like I said, my hamstring's just been really getting sore and tight. So sometimes around the house, I'll just kind of uh, stretch it out just for a couple hops. That feels good. But I wouldn't recommend walking like that for a couple reasons. One, your hip flexor is just going to get, you know, really tight and sore. And also your legs out in front. So it's kind of, you know, uh, prone to maybe hitting something or getting caught. Uh, and then the other thing I just wanted to to chat about, um, well, two more things. Um, one was do, when you're doing stairs, if you're non-weight bearing, um, when you're going down the steps, if you just imagine these stairs, I'm at the top of the steps and I'm going down. When you're going down, you want that leg in front of you, right? If you can just imagine, just picture, if I was going downstairs and my leg was back behind me, I'm more prone to tumbling down those stairs. So foot in front, as you go down. And the opposite is true for if you're going upstairs. So now just envision I'm, I'm at the bottom of the stairs and the stairs I'm going, I'm looking straight up at the steps. If my leg was in front of me, 
as I'm going up the steps, you can envision how I could have a tendency to fall back. So when going up steps, if you're non-weight bearing, just keep the leg back. Um, you can watch my, my video on stair climbing I'll, I'll, and I give you more tips uh, there. Um, but yeah, if you are partial weight bearing and, and manipulating steps with your crutches, then definitely use um, the pattern of using the crutch with the leg, if that makes sense. If you watch the, uh, the crutch video, it should make more sense. Um, and then the last thing I wanted just to talk about was your, your center of body mass. You, you really want to keep your center of body mass within your base of support. So, you know, regardless of, of where you have your leg, even if it's in the proper position, if your center of body mass is not within your base of support, you're going to be in trouble. So just to give you an example of what, what I'm talking about, if you're, way, if you're forward here, okay, my weight is back, my base of support is my foot and the two crutches here, the two crutch tips. My center of body mass right now is way far back. I'm not falling because my center of body mass is still in my base of support. However, if I am not efficient enough or just maybe I'm going too fast, not being mindful, and I take these crutches away and I haven't shifted my center of body mass forward, I'm going to end up falling backwards, right? Because now my center of body mass is going to be outside of my base of support, which is just going to be my foot. I hope that's making sense. So you, you know, really what it comes down to is just no matter if you're going sideways or backwards or dancing or shuffling, you need to just make sure that your center of body mass is always within your base of support, whether your base of support is the crutches in the foot or whether your base of support is, at some parts, the base of support is just your one foot. So I hope that makes sense. For more information on what I do and how I do it, and articles that I write, please visit my website at physioyoga.ca and that will also tell you where I'm at offering workshops and classes and speaking at conferences and teacher trainings. And on Twitter and Instagram, you can follow me at Prosco Yoga. On Facebook, you can like my page, Prosco Physio Yoga Therapy, and I like to post some really interesting articles and videos of other resources and, and people that I respect.